Yo, everyone, welcome back to the fire you can't put out. Yay! So、uh, this is the week of、uh, May 11th. Yep. So, that's right. Oh my God! This this、uh, this show is almost six months old. Yep, so, yeah, yeah.、Uh, we're we're hit, just by hit, hitting our six months now. Well, lots to cover. Lots to cover this week.、Uh, some unbelievable stuff.、Uh, but let's、right. get the、uh, the regular stuff out of the way.、Uh, we have a Facebook page, Facebook dot com slash tfycpo, which stands for the fire you can't put out. Yes, sir. And again, Facebook dot com slash tfycpo.、Uh, Go over and give us a like,、uh, and、uh, we post our uh, uh, sh- regular shows on that page whenever it comes out.、Yep. And、uh, tell us what you want us to cover, etc., etc. And we also have a uh, fa- uh, email address: is、uh, tfycpo at gmail dot com. Say that again: is tfycpo at gmail dot com.、Uh, you can also subscribe to our show on iTunes. Just uh, find us. Uh, the, just type in the fire you can't put out. Uh, on iTunes,、uh, in iTunes Store, and you'll find us. And once once again, we I, we have to thank our buddies at Open Sky Radio Seven、uh, Radio. I'm I'm all over the place today. Open Sky Radio dot com. It's in San Francisco.、Uh, they're giving us、uh, they're hosting one、well, number one. They're hosting our show, so you can you know have a, have a way to download them and listen to them. And the other the other thing is they give us a lot of support. In terms of、uh, IT and all the other stuff, etc., etc. So,、uh, just、uh, just a quick note:、uh, there will be some、uh, irregularity. <laughs> yeah, coming that sounds、up. awful. That sounds、right. awful. Sounds like you need Metamuso, you know. <laughs> but、right. but uh, because I, I'll be、uh, doing some traveling, so、uh, we were still trying to get a weekly show going. Have a show comes out every week, but. Uh, forgive us if we can't put that together because once you get out of your domain, sometimes things doesn't happen as clear, as nicely and smoothly as you want. But、uh, make, I'm、right. already making some、uh, arrangement so we can keep the show show going. So、uh, be patient with us, and、uh, we should we should have a show going on every week. <laughs> so and well, that, again today、uh, we only have、uh, for for now. Which we hope it's going to be remedied soon, but for now we st- we only have、uh, Melvin and I for the show. So hopefully, hopefully in the middle of it something will change, but y- you never know. Right. So, okay, a lot of crazy stuff going on this week, right? Let's let's just a、uh, uh, quick update. Let's do let's do just a little just a little bit of Boston, and then I want to jump into、uh, the three women. That were that were released after after being kidnapped for ten years, and then I've got a I've got a real fine point that I want to put on that story、right. uh, with other kidnapping victims. So first、uh, first off, Tamerlan、uh, Sarnayev、uh, was finally buried this week. What had happened after Boston had had the body, and the police had done everything they wanted to do with it, and the funeral home had done everything that they wanted to do with it. Then it was time to bury the body, but nobody wanted the body. His His, of course, his brother is dead. His friends have been arrested. His girlfriend is 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 being、uh, is being investigated right now. His parents wanted to take the body home, but every time the funeral parlor、uh, in Boston, this 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 one guy that owns this little funeral parlor in Boston, he just wound up with this body. Every time he'd call Russia, they wouldn't return his calls, and it became pretty clear that they didn't want the body. So his parents said, "Yes, we want the body, but without cooperation from Russia, they have no way to get it home." So this guy just had this body. That he was just keeping on ice, so to speak, right?、Uh, and and he was just stuck with it. This this guy that killed all these people, and nobody nobody wanted to give him a proper burial. Finally,、uh, as of、uh, Thursday, I believe、uh, he did get a a proper burial.、Um, let's see.、Uh, well, okay. Well, first of all,、uh, I think I think you said his brother is dead. I think his brother. You mean. The dead、oh, brothers,、uh, the, the brothers dead brother, in, right, right, yeah, in, no, I, yeah, I, 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 that's and, right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I well, that, that's another thing too. That's another thing too.、Um, that's right. Well, you know, I mean, they, I do, I do not believe the、uh, FBI and the Boston police actually, you know, waterboard this guy. You know, right. So there is a way. I think you know, it's easy for us to sit here and say, you know, what to do, you know, what, 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 what. but you know, and I have read expert reports, expert uh, 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 opinion. On this, as in, you don't really have to torture somebody to get information. That's right. So you know, and I'm sure I don't. I don't know if we're actually going to talk about it today. The Guantanamo whole Guantanamo situation. We but, are. We're going to get into Guantanamo. But you know, I mean, that that's another 
that's another uh, argument against having a place like Guantanamo. Absolutely. So uh, you know, but uh, yeah, the whole thing is just uh, go ahead, go ahead. If you have, uh, and, and I, th- I believe uh, it's a wife, right? Not girlfriend. They are actually. Oh no, married. you're right. It is. A, it is his wife. Right. It is his wife. Right. Right. Um. So so finally, uh, people said, "Well, just get rid of it." They had thought about burning it, but the guy was a Muslim. It's against their religion to burn him. And they go, "Well, how'd they get rid of Bin Laden?" Well, they, they dumped they him in the ocean. Well, Boston, Boston's not going to do that. Uh, finally, a an anonymous donor came forward and paid for the guy to be entombed right. um, in an undisclosed location. Right. All the police have said is that the body is no longer in Boston, and they're not going to disclose where he where he is buried. But he's entombed, which suggests to me that if Russia does step up and say, yeah, fine, out of respect for his parents, we're going to bring the body home, it- he can be. He is, can he can he can be he can be exhumed. Is it maybe like being stored in a mausoleum or something? I think like that's that? <laughs> yeah. I think it is. I, I thought about that. And I go. He's probably in a mausoleum. Uh, so so uh, yeah, he's, he's fifty miles outside of Boston. But here's the thing. Yeah. Um. When the death certificate comes out, and the death certificate will be public. Um. They might black that part out, but they they tell where you're buried, and so it might come out where his body is buried. Well, you know, right in, in this in, in the age of internet, there's no way. That this uh-huh. is going to be remain. This is going to remain a secret. But they're going to find. I hope, you. Yeah, but I, I hope it never comes out because there's just no. There's no reason. There's no reason to keep going with this. The guy's already dead. Just like uh, the photos of his body on the slab that came out after is he it, died. Is it real? It's, it, it's yeah, it is real, but it's pointless. It's um, pointless to release those photos. Right. It's pointless for us to find out where he's buried. Like, Justice right. has essentially been done, or as done as it's going to be. You know, and it doesn't matter. His in in a body is nothing. You know, remember remember Saddam Hussein's two sons when they are getting yes. uh, when they're being whacked. Uday the, and Kusay. The, the, the DOD actually released. Yep. Is there a DOD or CIA actually released the the photos of their the heads? Of you know, their the, the swelled corpse. up faces and hacked up and yep. There is oh, no thanks. reason. You know, this back in the Bush administration. So you know, hey, what can you say about that? But you know, there's no reason to release something like this. It just pissed people off on both sides. To stir up, you know, uh, emotions. There's no reason to do that. But 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 apparently the death photos of you know uh, the the elder brother is uh, is leaked uh, by uh, not by accident, but you know it's leaked. Oh yeah, by, no, by, not no by accident. not official. It's not an official release. It's not official, but it, it was a leak to TMZ. Either. Yeah, correct, yeah. correct. So uh, there's really no reason to do that. And you know this whole thing, um, you know, it's one of these things in life that you go ahead, go ahead. Over the next number of weeks and months, obviously we're gonna we're gonna get more about the surviving brother, more about his wife. But I think essentially the chapter on this on I mean the book on this is closed. I don't think we're gonna find out too much more. So this well, I think I think well on this on this thing particular thing, but I think right. you know, the the digging was still still going. I said you know he spent six months in Russia. Yeah. What did he do? What people did he see? What did he, you know, what was what what was the what was some of the stuff that he went through that changed him? Yes. For him to become such a monster. You know, that well, kind of investigative stuff would go on. But, you know, you know, when they, it, yeah, go ahead. When it comes to the to the photos, which, by the way, the, the public just eats up. And I know because they share them incessantly right. on social networking. Americans and it's, it's obviously not folks like you and I, but Americans have a taste for vengeance like nothing else. Right. We we say to ourselves, how can people attack us? And I say the same thing because I don't have it in me to attack anybody, uh, uh, especially look, especially blowing people up. But we look at the movies. Look we at the movies. Who, we who want to see the body. And we who want to hang the body and we who want to, you know, do all this nasty stuff to it, we are Americans when we feel we've been wronged, especially by a, another group of people or nationality or anything, we are vengeful and bloodthirsty like nobody. Well, look at the movies. I mean, it's not, it's a yeah. kind of an indication uh, for our culture, right? But, you know, look at all the, right. West, look at all the Westerns. It's about, it's, it's, all of them spoke, it's about killing people, you know? A lot and even of the- even the even the you know remember uh, Unforgiven, the yes. uh, the uh, more uh, quote unquote enlightened Western out there, right? That the, one of the few very few uh, example of that particular subgenre 
which yeah. there are some conservatives, conservatives, I think Michael Medved, really hated that movie yeah. for obvious reasons, right? You right. know? Even that one, you think about it, it's about corpses, it's about, you know, you, you think at the, at the beginning, at like three-quarter, you know, yeah, three-quarter, I think seven-eighths of that movie is about, you know, growing old and this, you know, this... Um, this uh, experience and what killing will actually uh, affect exactly. a person, right? But exactly, you know what? At right. the last scene, remember the last scene? You know, they have to show Morgan Freeman dead lying there. And then right. the last scene is about Clint Eastwood going to town and just shooting up everybody, shooting up the town, killing everybody. Even though some, some people are, are uh, kind of innocent, <laughs> You know, they're just a lot. A lot right. of the movies that are really that are really big hits here in America are the movies that do show a lot of bloodshed, but nothing, yeah. nothing else after. Yeah, it's like Die I Hard. Think, Die Hard. You have to you have to see Hans Gruber kind of right, you know, fall right. fall down the building. You know, why I are we think, talking about movies? <laughs> well, well, no, it, because it Sorry, speaks. Because I was making a point about our culture and how. We not only don't mind seeing these death photos, we want these things, and we're going to share them with our family and friends. Right, right. And it's a little bit of bloodlust, unfortunately. Yeah, ridiculous. You yeah. Know? So, uh, so that's Boston for now. Let's get wait, into. Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me go say ahead. one more thing. Let's, let me okay, say go one ahead. More thing. You know this this um, you know can find a place for proper burial thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it it has to be one of these things in life that. You just have to. You just have to shake your head. I mean, there's nothing else you can do, and nothing else you you can't. You you, you can't even. It's even. It's so hard to have an opinion even on this. I think if, if you if you think about it, you know, um, is that um, you understand why this happens? Because this guy is so hideous. What he did was so hideous, and yeah. nobody, nobody. Um, I, I you know it's really so hard it's really so hard to to kind of um figure out what I'm trying to say here but yeah. um you know I think I think one of the things you got to think about is how 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 did it become like this how this this person you know every no everybody everybody I I do believe this as in people are born good not evil. I think so too. And then, right. and then something happened to you know throughout a continuum of things that happened that kind of determined, kind of nudged this uh, nudge a person into a certain direction. And I'm thinking that you know, I mean, a lot of times funerals and you know burial because the guy's dead. Wherever he is, he probably doesn't care. You know, e everything but, everything matters with right. the way that a child not only is is right. is conceived, now, but how the child is treated in utero, right. now, and how you, it, how how it is raised. Now, now, real you, quick, you let me are, say this. Now you are no, you are you are a parent. Now I'm not. I am right. Well, but here, but here's the thing. And scientists learned this a number of years ago. Women, if they are under a lot of stress. Their bo okay, their body is constantly sending signals to the baby. Obviously, the baby eats because they eat, but they are const it's constantly sending signals to the baby. So if the mother lives in a, in a stressful environment, it sends a lot of cortisol to the baby. And if the baby gets too much of that, then it under then the baby already understands before it's even born or its body and brain understand that the minute it gets out in that world, it's going to have to have a fight or flight response. Right. And if it doesn't get a lot of that, then it no, then it's born. It's going to be born into a more peaceful world, and it adapts like that. Right. So, so I mean, I mean, even when you're in utero, everything shapes a child. But so if if that happens, and then they're born, and then they have a stressful childhood, and then they get religion, and then they become radicalized. It's it's not it doesn't happen in a day and it doesn't happen because somebody saw an internet video or somebody picked up a pamphlet. Right. It's it's a long it's life a long that eventually leads somebody to this. Right, right. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say too is, um, you know, however you look at this whole thing, it's a tragedy. It is. And I really don't understand those people who oh the guy is dead let's celebrate let let let's uh, no. let's be happy. There's there's no room for. Uh, there's no room for joy here. The people that I think, were blown I up think, are going to have to go through physical therapy for years. Right. The, 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 the only uh, – I think we can be grateful that they got – they you know, this this whole thing is over as we know it now. Right. But people who are happy 
that the guy is dead. Um, I don't know where the, these people are uh, mentally, really, because however you slice, slice and dice this, this is there is no room for for happiness and joy here. It's like every corner you turn you, when you think about this thing, is a tragedy. And think yeah. about how the parents are going through it right now. You know, even though even though yes, they are, you know, saying weird things, you know, you know, talking about all these conspiracy theories and stuff, but. You know, you, 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 you think about, you know, just on a human level, you think about what they're going through right now, what the uncle in Baltimore is going through right now. It's awful. Right. This whole thing is awful. And I went back to, like, what, what I said, you know, two or three episodes ago. This is, this is a, 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 a complete nightmare for an immigrant right. family. Because, you know, every time, well, yeah, well, I mean, you come to the U.S., you think you have a, you know, it's a, it's a new start. And you, you never, you never thought it would come to this. So, well, anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Because, like, this whole thing is just so sad. It really bugs me that in one hand, on one hand, I understand why nobody wanted to take the body. Yeah. But on the other hand, I'm like, this is just so effed up, you know, this whole thing. You let's know? let's let's get into uh, good news, thing. good news, good news, bad news. Uh, Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Gina De Jesus were released this week from their from uh, where they've been trapped for ten years by a man named Ariel Castro right. in Ohio. Cleveland, Am I correct Ohio. about that? Cleveland, Ohio. They were all three were kidnapped and they were taken back to this house in the same neighborhood where they all lived right. and they were kept in a basement locked to the wall with chains and ropes <laughs> and beaten and raped for 10 years and so what happened was on it was Monday or Tuesday one of the women went to the front door with with her 6-year-old daughter by the way who was born in captivity right. she stuck her hand out through a hole in the door they'd cut a hole in the screen so that they could reach out just to get the mail the three the three the three kidnappers did right. And she got through that hole and saw a man outside and began screaming bloody murder. He helped – and all the doorknobs inside the house had been removed so that the girls couldn't get out. The guys had a way of getting out, but the girls could not get out. So this guy – this guy – and I forget the gentleman's name. It kicks in the door, takes her to his house. She calls the police, and just like that, all three women are released. But the, the stories that are coming out now are just insane. First yeah. of all, the, the, the guy – that, that took Amanda Berry to his house and let her call 911. He was offered $25,000 for his role in, in, in releasing the girls. Right. And he said, no. Do you know what those girls have been through? Give them the money. Right, right. And I, I, am, I am all kinds of impressed. Charles anybody, Ramsey. Charles Ramsey. And if Charles anybody Ramsey. wants to look up his video, the <laughs> interview that he, he – yeah. He, <laughs> he, he is my type of guy. Well, you know, I mean, I mean Hero – I, you know, hero is about, and he keeps saying, he, "I'm not a hero. I'm not a hero." You know, he is because he is totally. You for know, me, I mean, for, for me, it would be automatic to do something like this. But there are a lot of people; it would not be automatic. They they hear a screaming woman and they go, "None of my business," and they would just walk on. Right, right. Hero he did it. Hero. A lot of times, hero is the right person at the right time doing the right things, and he is absolutely. I mean, he's. You know, I mean, he. he he didn't, I think I don't think he even think he just like oh something you know he just he just he just helped out you know and yeah. you know they're they're good people I mean yes there are a lot of crap going down in the world but you know right. I, I I do believe that you know good people are everywhere yeah, just they are. that just that just happened that in this case this guy uh, this guy's good deeds is being broadcast all over all over the the world the globe. Which exactly. is good for him. I hope. I hope something really good happened to this guy. And I it, do too. You know, from from the from the um, you know from the video from the news media news video that we see. I think it's not a rich man. No, you he's know, not this by guy, any means. Yeah, this guy. And I, I really hope. I mean, it, it doesn't look like he wants money. You know. No. But I really hope. You know, they they they're gonna be some kind people that send him some stuff. You know, it's just something. You know. I, th I think I think I think it is happening because as soon as he refused the twenty five thousand dollars from the from the police department, okay. uh, I mean he became a hero again because he it, it's pretty obvious he's not thinking about himself at all in this. He goes, yeah. you know, great, those girls have been released, you know, after after ten years. Right. Now they were kept in the same neighborhood that they lived in. 
Uh, Amanda Berry was 16 when she was captured. She's 26 now and has a <laughs> six-year-old daughter that was born in captivity. Right. Michelle Knight, we just learned today, is going to have to go through facial reconstruction surgery because she was impregnated and beaten to the point of, mis- of miscarriage five different times. She's lost hearing in one of her ears, and her face has been caved in, and she's now going to need surgery. You know, it's, surgery. It, it's, if, you, if you can actually stomach reading the, you know, some of the facts – and some, I of, some of the findings from this story right. so far, so far. Let me emphasize There's, that word. Every because, day it's changing. Right. If you can stomach reading that stuff, it's like I thought this stuff only happens in Korean movies. It's uh, so yeah. hideous. Yes, absolutely. It's so um, ridiculous. But, you know, and, and you know, yes, we are, I guess we are being armchair um, crime solvers or armchair whatever absolutely right? not but, but no no but you know what i'm saying right how, I, we, we before the show we were actually talking amongst ourselves how, how the heck can this thing went down for 10 years blacked out windows right um but, the women on leashes at night in the backyard after everyone had gone to bed wearing wigs and and clothes that made them unrecognizable yeah. i mean there were there were there were signs chains Chains hanging from the ceiling. God, this like is... you, they, I don't know what they plan on doing with this house. No one's going to want to live in that house yeah. ever again. No, that, that is like, but, uh... but Hollywood will be buying that house and making horror movies inside it. Chains hanging from the ceiling. I see it in, in horror movies and I go, that's ridiculous. That would never happen. Oh, and man. it did right. in America. That's these women was these women. Some of these women were just blocks from uh, from where they lived, where they disappeared from. You know, it's, they were that close stuff. to their families all the time, and they never even knew. It. So, I, I mean, guess some they, of this, good some news, bad news. They're released, but bad news, obviously. I mean, they're going to be dealing with this for years. Right. I mean, I mean, some of this stuff is so ridiculous. You thought only happened in you know uh, in Park Chan Wu's movies. You know, uh, the the uh, revenge, the trail, the revenge trilogy. Yeah. Only, only happened. Oh man, and, and you know, and yeah, you know, the I don't think anybody's talking about this, right? But you were saying that the cops were actually called through the years. Yeah, to, they to were check called that through place. the years. They were they were called one time after someone said they saw a naked woman in the backyard. The police showed up several times over the years. And by the way, the Cincinnati Police Department is denying that any calls were made regarding that house. Cleveland, Cleveland. Right, right. In Cleveland, yeah, the Cincinnati police or Cleveland, excuse me, Cleveland police are saying that they never got any calls and they never visited the house. But people in the neighborhood are saying, no, they did. They showed up after we saw a naked woman in the backyard right. and we heard we heard some noise. Police would show up. Ariel would answer the door and he'd go, everything is fine. The police would never go inside. And <laughs> that that would be – could you imagine how frustrating that would be, especially if the women knew that the police showed up to the – like they came that close. Like you, the policeman – could have been the well, hero. Actually, just by, I was. I, I've had police come to my door before for any number of reasons, right. um, namely when I was growing up. Like I grew up in a lot of really terrible neighborhoods. And w- even if you have a screen door, they walk up and they're looking through you. They're looking around you. They're bobbing their heads from side to side to look all around your house to see anything suspicious. Right. Had they done that, they might have seen that he had padlocks on most of the doors Inside his house. Well, uh, these police officers, right? I'm sure they're still around. Uh, and of course. If they, if they are, you know, uh, if they are a decent human being, I, I really think, you know, now that they think back, they, they, they probably, you know, the couple of cops that actually got sent over to check out yeah. the house, they probably feel really bad right now. Oh, I'm because, sure they do. Because if any of them are a little bit, uh, do a little bit more, uh, do, what was that word, due diligence? Yeah, uh, in, terms of, in, in terms of uh, taking care of the you know police work, then you know this thing could be resolved years ago. But, but we can't, of course, we can't say that. I mean, it already happened, right? So we can't, you know, hey, what if, what if? It's about what if, right? But yeah, what if? Listen, listen to this, and I, here's where I want to put a real fine point on this. Elizabeth Smart, who you may remember, was kidnapped as a child and spent 16 years um, as part of a forced uh, three-way marriage. Um, she came out this week because they've been asking her for years because when she was spotted, she was spotted out in public walking with her captors. She wasn't trying to escape. She wasn't trying to get away. And then they asked her. They said, Elizabeth, you were just walking around with them. They weren't restraining you. You know, you were kidnapped. 
Why did you not try to get away? Right. And she came out this week, and she finally said so. She gave a speech at John Hopkins University this week uh, during a forum on human trafficking, and she said – it's because of my abstinence-only right, education. Right, right, she right. said it makes rape victims feel dirty. The way that her her teacher, her sex ed teacher, if I can call her that, <laughs> described women who were not virgins. She said to a man, "You are a it's a, it's a weird analogy, so just bear with me. It's not mine. It's too crazy." He said. He said to. She said to a man. You, if you're not a virgin, you are a chewed up piece of gum and you are a piece of gum that nobody's going to want to chew because you've already been chewed. And so she felt like that her life had no value. Well, you know what? The, she had had she had had a baby with her captor, and she goes, "This is my life now, and no man is ever going to want me." You know what? Uh, you know what? Now, now, if the teacher said that to her, right? Right. That, uh, if the teacher can set can uh, could say something like that to her, that actually. Do means that some men actually think like that, you know? Well, those men, I'm sorry, you suck. The problem, <laughs> my, my 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 larger issue here is abstinence-only education, right. which most which most conservative doesn't freaking dis- work. districts districts are taking up now. They're, rather than educating kids, they're saying don't do it. I didn't have a right. baby in high school. I'm talking about myself. I did not have a baby in high school. And I, I'd like to say absolutely learning sex ed, getting educated about sex kept me away from engaging in it, right, quite yeah, honestly. Yeah. And I think it's very, very important. But there's a lot of districts in America, namely in Texas, right. where there are conservative legislators, and they want no sex ed. They go, you're just giving kids permission. You're giving them condoms. You're giving them birth control. You're just giving them permission to have sex. Abstinence only. Just tell them not to do it. What's the fastest way to get a kid to do something? Tell them <laughs> not to do right, it. Right, right. If you have any ever coach or, or be uh, 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 – <laughs> be uh, any kind of counselor in any kind of summer camp this right? and this <laughs> like, is the drawback try, try try to tell kids to go to sleep early yeah yeah this like that's what the, happened th- this is the measurable uh provable drawback uh downside to to abstinence only education elizabeth smart is now the head of the elizabeth smart foundation an organization that promotes awareness about abduction Right. Um, and she was brought up in uh, in Utah. Uh, sex education is required in Utah, but conservative lawmakers have repeatedly tried to instate an abstinence only curriculum, which is what she got because she's a Mormon. But she's now out on the circuit giving speeches uh, against it, against against essentially the way that she was brought up because it made her it made her assimilate. It made her just. Serve the man that raped her and gave her a child, which was her captor, him and his wife. I mean, it's it's a strange thing. And she goes, well, whatever. So the danger of it, right. obviously, you know, and and I think I think uh, now, I mean, especially with something like this, I think it's time that uh, that we that we get rid of this, you know. And of course, she she now spoke out against this uh, at a, at a very at a very critical time when we when we learned about uh, when we learned about what happened in Ohio this week. Well, there's another weird thought about uh, this uh, this whole incident. Well, incident. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I I shouldn't use the word incident because it's 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 not as likely as an incident to these victims. No, uh, you know this whole this whole crime, this entire uh, uh, crime is, um, you know, immediately I see you know when you know NBC posted pictures on Facebook, and you know some of the news outlets posted pictures of uh, uh, Ariel Castro and his brothers. Yes, um, the comments. Some of the com- well, sh- one should not read any comment on the internet. If I you, never if, read the comments. If you want, if you want to stay sane, but you yes. know sometimes I will take a challenge. And you know, and you so, are. But but some of the comments, I mean, you know, went back to you know. Remember, fifteen minutes ago, we talked about, you know, kind of my really weird struggle, mental struggle, a mental exercise thing with this whole, you know, not being able to bury the body thing. Yes. Uh, some people immediately launch into, you know, let's all skip the trial phase and just kill, them. kill the brothers. Yeah. Just like the Constitution well, says. Yeah. You know, it's another one of these instances <laughs> that, yeah, these guys, I think they deserve what will for sure happen to them. But that's not how we roll, man. No, it isn't. You and know, that's, that's, that's not that's what we did. It's, it's, 
that's, that's one of the things that's supposed to make America great is that everybody gets a trial. We we don't we don't find a suspect and then say kill them. We yeah. call them if if we find them standing over the body, smoking gun in hand. Right. We still call them a suspect. Well, I mean, I think about tough jobs and you know, what's the word? Esty jobs. You know. Yeah. Think about the public defender that has to, uh, you know. Oh. Work for these yeah. three guys. I yeah, mean, that's you, that's uh, not that's a. Uh, no, you know, ab, ab, you, know you, you know, you I I couldn't even imagine standing near a person like that. And I don't know if you saw any of the court pictures of Ariel Castro. He's wearing a windbreaker and he's got his face buried in the front part of it the whole time. He just kept his head down the whole time. Somebody knows that they did wrong. Yeah. I'm curious, and obviously we'll never know. If he really, if, if he thought that this is the way it was going to end, because they uh, had to, they had to know that it was going to end, they were going to have to kill him somehow. That's right. You know, that's I mean, right. I would, well, there's there's only well, there's only like because they got away with it for ten years. They well, probably thought they were home free. Well, you can't. Well, you know what? At the end, I think they what they probably have in mind is killing these three women. You know, probably, but there, they kept no, them alive for so long, though. Well, but but there's no way. Or, it's not a growing all together situation. You oh, know? No, 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 it's not. So, so yeah, I, I think you make a good point. Yeah, there probably was going to be a point where they were going to kill him. But th- this whole thing is just so crazy. And you know, and, you know, one of these really horrible thoughts I have when I can't sleep is, I really hope this is the only one of these cases in this country ever. I hope so too. Because it's really, it's really horrible to think that there's another incident. Uh, well, there's like missing person, where missing, someone is missing, just missing, up. missing people report every day, right? You see those people yep. just disappear. Yep. A lot of, a right. lot of, th- a lot of times, like teenagers, they run away from home. Well, you know, right, right, right. But, but, but there, but, there, there are people just vanished. But even for the Green River Killer, you know, the women that died, but got got killed by this guy. Even those are like. You know, those are like really heartbreaking stuff. I mean, there's some part, somebody can just disappear like that and, and, and met a horrible faith, fate. You know? Rachel Maddow did a piece about this the other night, and people that disappear who have legitimately disappeared, right. um, it, it's, it's incredibly rare. And then for a story to have this kind of ending, that yeah. it really – once in a blue moon is way too often. And thank I you. mean it's really, it's, it's really a bizarre and, and it never happens. And, and once again, we have to thank Mr. Charles Ramsey. Mr. Charles Ramsey is yeah. going to have a bridge Sa- or something named after him. Sa- salutations to you, sir. And, you know, yeah. and he, tip, he, tip he, of the hat. I, I know. Sure. I know. <laughs> you know, if you look at his interview, you know, one of the one of the um, one of the very many, you know, the one that did on the same day that yeah. he said something at the end that is one of these, you know, do, do you do you read that? And he says, well, some something's wrong when a oh, pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. white girl running to I a have, black man. I have the best story about that. I was oh, I, you know, I was when I listened to that the first time, I I. You know, I laugh so hard, but it's not one of these laughs that I'm actually really happy about. It's yeah. just, you know, somebody finally said it. I was listening and then, to what I was just, listening wait, well, let me wait. Wait. And when we, If you look at that, that thing is all over the internet. So look at that, that video. And uh, you, <laughs> it's even actually funnier when you see, you know, uh, some of the people around him start to start started laughing. Because yeah. they know the deal, and then the, the reporter was so uncomfortable at the end. It's like, oh, should I stop this? Should I no? I should let him talk. There, but should I stop this? I uh, should let him talk. He's a hero. <laughs> you know, it's I was kinda... listening to the local conservative talk talk show host, one of the local conservative talk show hosts here, on the morning when that broke. When it broke, I was actually listening to a conservative talk show, and they played that clip of him saying that. <laughs> and after he finished saying, "Black, what, why pretty white girl ran to a black man's arms? I know something's something's." Gone wrong when the when the tape stopped everybody in the room was just silent and then somebody <clears throat> just cleared their throat and, and but, 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 so that that was um uh, charles rams like they didn't even know how to react to it they didn't even they didn't know if they could laugh and, and they know, didn't know if it was okay to say anything obviously it's a room full of white people yeah and, and you know to the people you know to the people who said oh you know oh no you know it's america we have a black president <laughs> i gotta i gotta tell you 
Charles Ramsey looks like he uh, lift a little, you know. So it looks no, like he, no, he, no, he did. Yeah, he he did. A, what, is it, how, how old is he? Like maybe 45, 50 40, years yeah, old. Oh yeah, well, I thought he was forty. I thought he said forty seven. Uh, so he's, he's in his forties. He 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 lifts. He he know what he's talking about. He lived his life. He has. He he know what he's talking about. So to, to can you know to some of the conservative talk shows that says, oh, this guy is. Why is he bringing race into this thing? You know what? Shut up. You don't know. Well, you don't know. The, half well, of it. The, con- the conservatives are now bringing up the fact he's got a – that he spent a little time in prison too. And I don't know why that matters. Well, he's, they're, a, they're he's, he's a hero thing. to me just the same. But I think they're right. trying to – I think they're, it's the dog whistle thing. Black, prison, look at this guy. Right, right. You know, he's, let's, not, he's not let's, trustworthy. Let's, let's, let's point that. No, right. no. If he didn't do a good thing. He's black and he went to prison. He spent your tax dollars. Let's start hating on him for something come. It's stupid. Well, well, you know, conservative uh, talk shows like try to discredit somebody for uh, you know for jail time, etc. What's new? <laughs> what's right? You know, what's new? So, uh, yeah. so yeah, let's uh, let's let, let's wrap this up. Well, I, you know I, what? I, Let I, me say that one more time. I just want to say that one ahead. more time, Mr. Charles Ramsey. Yes. Salutations to you, sir. Hats off. Hats off, sir. Hats off to you, sir, for yes. sure. A, a, a big TFY CPO salute. <laughs> Salute! Yes. Okay, let's move on. Sir. All right, let's let's get into South Carolina. The special election to fill Jim DeMint's seat uh, this week uh, happened between oh, uh, the Elizabeth Colbert Bush, who is a, a businesswoman, local businesswoman, and also the sister of uh, Stephen Colbert. Uh, I guess she, she pronounces it Colbert. What the, uh, uh, Stephen Colbert she... on Comedy Central, uh, who went up against uh, dirtbag uh, Mark Sanford. What, what, Mark you, what, San- what kind of report are you uh, reading out of? Um, I am reading. No, I mean, it's, a, it's a joke. You know the the, the oh, Colbert oh, oh, report. Oh, 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 the report, the report, the right, 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 right. Colbert report, right. special report. <laughs> now, now, uh, this time last week. No, wait. Um, we're doing this on on Saturday. So, I in the election was on Tuesday. So, I'd say Tuesday of last week. She was nine points ahead of him, but um, here's the mistakes. I mean, he won, even though uh, he's a total dirtbag. Yeah, cheated yeah. on his wife, spent right. taxpayer money to go see his well, mistress. You know like, what? You know the like, the, the, like, the, the, the held cheating, in contempt of court, like all these awful things. The cheating and, part, I'm not really. I'm not. I don't care. Really care about that part. Right. Right. But, well, you know, just, well, I, I I do and I don't because he. On Father's Day, he abandoned his kids to go see his mistress in South America and spent taxpayer funds to do it right. and then the lied tax, about the, the thing. taxpayer like, money part. That's like, the that's the part. He that. couldn't he couldn't have like he couldn't have made it any worse unless he did it like he drug his wife along and punched her in the face the whole time. He couldn't have been he couldn't have made it worse. Yeah. He just he did everything wrong that he could and he beat her still. But on Tuesday of last week, she was nine points ahead of him. Then something interesting happened. I don't know if you caught any of this, but there were a lot of anonymous push polls done in South Carolina. Did you catch any of right, that? Right, right, right. They called up and they and they would ask, they would ask, ask questions like this: Would it change your opinion of Elizabeth Colbert Bush if you heard that she killed somebody? Right. If you heard that she molested a child? If you heard and the people would say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did she do these things?" And they go, "Please hold all your questions to the end." Would it change your opinion if a, you found out that she drank blood? I mean, all just all kinds of things where they're asking a, a question, so they're not necessarily so, making so assertions. Shall, shall then, I say absolutely douchey tactics? Yes, and then at the end of the call, they'd say, "Did well, did did she do any of those things?" And they would say, "Thank you for your time." An untraceable number, and the people would never identify who they are. They would just say, "We'd like to know who you're voting for." And then they, if they say, well, I'm voting for Sanford, they'd say, have a good day. We're doing a poll. If they said Colbert Bush, they'd say, did you know that she exhumes bodies and cuts off the skin and wears it? No, I mean, they would just uh, – all kinds of terrible things. And, and her numbers started ticking, ticking down, down, down. It, it worked. And it worked masterfully. Wow, well, you know, it's, it's South here's Carolina. The, here's, so. here's the other mistake. Now, Sanford, it's a conservative district. Now, see, I don't think that seat's ever been held by a Democrat. And if it, if it has, it's been a very, very long time. But here's the other mistake that the Colbert Bush campaign made. They didn't talk a lot about her. They made the whole campaign about his shortcomings. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, when when asked, she'd say, "Yeah, I, you know, this is the kind of person I'd be, and this the this is what I would do." She got kind of wafty, unwavy on the on the question about abortion, which I don't know why. Who God? Who cares? But she made the focal point of her campaign his indiscretions, yeah. and he made himself available to everybody. At the end of interviews. As the reporter was wrapping up, he would ask, yes, do you have any more questions? Like he made himself a wide open book. He knows. He goes, yeah, I'm a total D-bag, <laughs> but people are going to vote for me because I'm a Republican. So there's nothing I can say that's going to help her win the election. So that's that's a mistake they made. So obviously I feel like we had a good chance with that chair, which we would have probably just lost in two years anyway when they found a good candidate because he lost the Republican Party support pretty fast. After he start after he after he started running because he was held in contempt of court because right. he's still going through divorce proceedings with his wife right his wife right now and she found him she found him nosing around the house well, at late at night you know right. so much for family family value exactly yeah, marriage, so they, uh, sanctity of marriage oh by the way he voted to impeach Clinton right. he was in Congress when Clinton was president he voted to impeach Clinton for lying about an affair you know there's a hypocrisy hypo hypocrisy is not news Hello. For, 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 for the Republicans, you know, it, I mean, but it's it's not just a pocket. Like it's the it's the exact same thing. Right. It's not even kind of. It's not even like well, you lied and I lied, so there. No, it was the exact same thing. Right, right, so, right. So, so it's like it's, it's like somebody is somebody's telling you you shouldn't ur urinate on the streets, and at the same time they're urin urinating on the streets. You know, right? And uh, <laughs> like and like and like Newt Gingrich was cheating on his wife when when he voted to impeach Clinton too. Right. I mean, they, they, it's all the stuff's coming out now. They were all doing it. So I felt like we had a good chance of getting that seat for just a little bit, getting a seat in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't get it. That's fine. That's the way the, the ball rolls. <laughs> yeah. rumbles, you know, like, like everybody, everybody is right away that night, like Tuesday night, everybody was like, well, uh, let's try to see if we can uh, get uh, South, Carolina, South Carolina to secede, you know. <laughs> get out. <laughs> get out. But, Let them uh, go. All right. Oh I wanna, man, I, I mean, this is, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, okay. That got to make you think, right? I know, I know we are like, you know, we are, we are still a year and a half away from midterm. Correct. But you got to think, um, it's, there's a very dangerous thing going on, I think. And it's red state is just getting redder and blue state is getting bluer. Yes. You know, and it kind of tie into what I think what we may talk about, uh, the next thing. Is you know uh, uh, same sex marriage, it's yeah. getting passed, uh, yep. state after state after state. The latest Delaware, blue state. Yep, Delaware. And, and then and has, then, right, right. Go ahead. And then the next one looks like it's going to be Minnesota. Yeah, next, just like uh, that. They passed the house. So blue state. I feel so, like this is a way. Like how fast they're doing this now. So that'll make twelve states. Uh, 13, right. if you count D.C., because D.C. is not. So, I mean, there's going to be a total of 51 at the end, and we're yeah. now moving into number and, 13 you know, if you count all of them, including to, D.C. To the, to the, uh, to the uh, you know, conservatives, uh, you know, but there are many kinds of conservatives. They're fiscal conservatives, and they're, like, you know, social conservatives. But, you know, for the conservative, who's people who identify themselves, themselves as, quote, unquote, conservatives, you know, the U of Chicago, you know. Like oh, yeah. I got to tell you. Um, marriage, uh, uh, say you know, marriage equality is good for business. <laughs> it is. It's great for business. It's it's awesome. So I I feel like these states taking this on one is, by one, which is kind of a joke because it, this is shouldn't even be a consideration. You know, huh. it's the bottom line. It's good for business, which is. Yep. Okay, yeah, so, but it's this is about human rights. This, this is about people being happy. Yes. You know, but, you know, should, but, you know, I mean, this is kind of a joke, but it's actually not. I mean, you know, more people uh, getting married, uh, more business. And speaking as a professional musician, hey, 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 hey. More flowers, more cakes, more musicians, more yes. cars, more booze, more all of it, you know. Um, all of the states really pushing this one by one, I feel like is their way of forcing the Fed's hand to just say, okay, fine, give it to everybody. Yeah. Because they're giving it to it state by state by state, and then, and then the, the you know, well, the DC's course, not going to fight it, you know? Well, it'll of be, course, every the, state will have it. Well, the, for the comeback, one of the comeback for, you know, some of these, I think the mo arguing religion and morality is, it, it no longer works. 
especially in you know blue states, right? This no right. longer works because everybody know what kind of you know、uh, BS it is, right? So、right. I think one of the argument that they they put forth is that um, uh, uh, well, why are the Democrats focusing on this? Uh, they, they are, they are, they are. Don't we have more pressing issues to、uh, talk about? They're, they they're, they're framing it the wrong way.、Right. This is the people. The people are pushing for well, this. They, so they, when they go, so the Democrats are for it, obviously, but the people are pushing for it. So when they go, why are the Democrats focusing on this instead of the debt or whatever else? They're, they're not. This well, is the a, people. I, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Now, one of the tactic is going to be, while、well, there are more pressing issues out there, right? Yeah, right. And, well, and that, you know that, what, dude? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so because this is civil rights. It's, it's, it's. It, hey, that's if you have to rank it. I think it's at least top three of of uh, of uh, of uh, of, uh, of issues, important issues that the、uh, uh, the legislative body has to deal with. You know? When I when I got into the comment section after Jason Collins came out, which by the way,、yeah. like we said, you should never do. I can't even tell you how many times I read、uh, the phrase "I don't care, <laughs> I don't care, I don't care." And then I got down there, and they go, "Well, what about this story? And what about that story?" And I go, and so I I typed in. I do care, and here's why I care. And then I didn't go back and visit the comment section again because I'm pretty sure I was just ripped to pieces. <laughs> no, I mean any any time anybody. Um, you know,、uh, be be comfortable enough to be themselves. Yep, it's good news.、Right. And you know, and, and this guy, hey, it's harder for this guy to do this because he、yeah. just don't, don't just have to deal with the family,、uh, don't just have to deal with the friends. He's、right. uh, well, he's not one of the top players in the NBA, but you know, he he's is, a free agent he's, right now. Actually, he's it's a he's a high profile person. He is. He absolutely is. No, he's so, he's not. You know. There have been、no. some retired players that that came out after they retired,、right. but he's he's a current player. He's a free agent. He he, he could play for somebody,、right. you know. And I, I that, know. Yeah, when, that's a big deal. Yeah. When are we gonna? When are, when is gonna be? Well, you know what? It's not gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. It's like, well, when is racism gonna end? Well, it's not gonna happen. But you know when when I you know it will be it will be,、um, you know it will be such a such a good thing if. This becomes just,、um, you know, not really、uh, too much of an issue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's hard. Exactly. It's really weird to say this, but you know,、uh, you know, like,、uh, you know, Natina Navratilova is that, is that her name? The, yeah, the, I, th- the, I think I think you're right. I, I'm not good at pronouncing that.、Uh, I mean, she 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 has been she has been uh, uh, the out for years. Right. And I think tennis is. I guess is a little bit. Different that culture? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know enough about tennis to comment on it. Other than, right, it's kind of dull to me. <laughs> but、right. you know, but anyway. But you know, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, hey, our state, uh, it's uh, it's uh, pretty forefront on this thing, you know, Washington,、right. and I think、right. our neighbors are, are waking up. Not、yep. that, not that neighbor, Idaho.、Uh, good luck Idaho with that. Idaho is going to be last. Good, good, good luck with good luck with that. But you know, our neighbor in the south, Oregon, it's、uh, I think it's coming very close. I, I would、is. say it is. And、I、then once,、absolutely. man, once California,、uh, it get it done, man, flood. You talk about floodgate. It's it's going to be. Dig, dig this, Texas, if you can believe it, is becoming a purple state. And potentially one day, and this is largely because of the Latino population,、yeah. could become a blue state. Could you imagine that state? Well, wait a, a minute. In, but, in a year or two, in like but, in a couple of years, well, like but in this, well, towards- well, but see, that's a little bit more complicated because they might vote Democratic, but in terms of you know gay issues,、uh, a lot. Unfortunately, I think we kind of talk about this.、Uh, well, a lot of minority uh, uh, communities are actually that- as, as, on in, in terms of this is very.、Uh, Socially conservative. The ac the well you're 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 partially right. The African a lot of the African American communities aren't aren't necessarily on the equality, which is which is too、right. bad. But but、uh, a lot of the、uh, Asian and definitely the Latino, they are they are socially、uh, more liberal. They are way socially more liberal because they found out and, and and down in California, the people that voted for Prop Eight, you know. You know, voted or voted to make.、Uh, I can't remember what, what, what the law with what, what Prop Eight, if you know, for or against. But the people that voted to make、uh, gay marriage illegal 
a lot of them voted for Barack Obama. And they go, oh, so a Democratic president but a conservative position. And they go, well, that was the uh, that was the African American community. They're st- they're still a socially uh, socially conservative, which is very strange to me. The conservatives don't like African Americans. Uh, but this sorry, is a, you know it's an evolution, and I hope right. I, I I know a lot of people you know a lot of uh, conservatives hate that word. Ha 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 ha! That's why we use it. An, it's an evolution of the mind, and you know I mean it, it's a kind of a related thing too, you know. You know, I, I'm, I'm doing a lot of this. I'm like, where am I? I've talked about this in the previous edition of the show. But you know, people who think, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, you know, in terms of race, in terms of studying society, is sociology, is social right. science, is right. you know, humanities. You know, I mean, to those people who think those are not important subjects to study in college, in education, you know, you're full of crap. You know, because boy, if, if, if when it boils down to it, that's our civilization. You know. Right. That sort of stuff. So anyway. Well, right, you know what? Right. We're at 15, 15, 50, five, zero minute mark. So, um, wow, time flies. Yes, it right? does. Uh, let's, uh, let me, uh, real quick, I just want to, uh, this is, this is human rights and, uh, the conservatives, you guys are on the wrong side of history again. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Guantanamo. Uh, speaking of conservatives, uh, the, the fiscally conservative conservatives, um, I read an article, and I think everybody should read this article, called Guantanamo by the Numbers. Right. And it, the overall, what it costs to run Guantanamo is estimated conservatively at about $900,000 per inmate per year. Right. There's 166 people detained at Gitmo. Um, the total operating budget for 2013 was 177 million. So the estimate for last year, they say, is 1 million 66 thousand per per inmate. The average cost per inmate at a maximum uh, security prison is about 33 thousand uh, dollars. One thousand or one million dollars versus 33 thousand if we kept them in one of the prisons that we have here. Uh, 3845 is, is spent each day to feed them, uh, where if they were in a federal prison, you, we would only be spending $3.16 a day. So we're spending more than 10 times what it would cost to feed them if we just imprison them here. Uh, which, now, is, which is totally now, another issue, you know, the, the prison, right. the prison but, industrial complex, but you know. Right, but, uh, Obama said he wanted to close this when he was running for an, an election in 08. And he has repeatedly tried to close this, and the conservatives say, no, we cannot have them in our prisons because they're not regular criminals. And by the way, to a terrorist, if they actually are terrorists, and what we're learning is more than half the people, Mm -hmm. more than half the people in Guantanamo are there because bounties were put out for terrorists. And then somebody who just needed the money would say, yeah, I think my my neighbor's a terrorist. And so they'd scoop him up and they'd bring him out to Gitmo. Right. And then they'd find out he's not a terrorist, but it doesn't mean he gets released just yet. So Obama's pushing again to get, close it up, guys. It's costing us a lot of money, nine, $900,000 per prisoner. But 100 prisoners are now on hunger strike, and 23 of them are being force-fed so that they don't die. Um like I said, 55 of them are, are cleared and have no reason to be there and are set to be released, but they're not being released. $40 million is being spent this year to put in a fiber optic cable so that they can have a uh, better internet out there. And the cost, the cost of, of sending things out there is absolutely astronomical because it has to go out there by boat or plane. So to the people that say – we can't close Guantanamo because these are special people. If they're terrorists, that's what the way they want to feel. If we throw them in our prisons and they just get into gen pop, they're not going to feel so hot. So these guys, these conservatives don't want to keep them there. You're giving them exactly what they want. When bin Laden wanted to uh, start a war with America, he said – we are never going to defeat the American military in hand-to-hand combat. It's absolutely impossible. But if we have a terrorist attack here and a terrorist attack there, any place we raise the al-Qaeda flag, that's where they'll send resources. And we'll do it here, and we'll do it there, and we'll do it there. And they'll send resources to all those places until eventually we bleed them dry and we beat them in their pocketbooks. And that's what's happening. Hmm. So, right. 
and 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 what we need and so what we need to do is we need to make these prisoners feel that they're not they're not a big deal and we're not going to spend a ton of money on them and we just need to bring them here and put them into our regular prisons and say see yeah it costs 10 times more to feed them in Guantanamo and you're right the whole prisoner or the whole prison industrial complex thing but even if we brought them here and treated them humanely and gave them a healthy meal even then it's probably still only 6 bucks or 9 bucks as opposed to $38 a day to feed them and it's definitely not going to cost nine hundred thousand dollars to imprison them. Right. Um, for all the people that are worried about why America is in debt, and America's in debt right now. God, we're so in debt. Well, here's a good way to bring it down: close Guantanamo. Right. right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty. Sh- I'm pretty clear on this one, so I don't think <laughs> I have anything to add. But, but you know, I mean, yeah, I, 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 well, you know, when the president says, um, you know, he 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 has tried multiple times to close it. I actually do believe in because um, you no, know, this, no. is, this is this is the Guantanamo thing. It's 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 uh, set up by the previous regime, you right? Know? And there are a lot of old guards of that regime still around. They are and right. It's like what, what are you going to do if this is dude? I'm, I'm like what the other guy said. Th- this is not a dictatorship, man. The, I mean, it's the, not. It's not like the President Obama didn't come in and says you you guys are out. You know. It doesn't right. work like I mean, that. He, I, I think I think he should have the old guard sticking around. That's Obama's fault. But the well, fact, you know what? Well, but, then, but, then, but the, but uh, the fact, I don't I mean, agree with that. Though. To, 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 well, to, to a degree, he he can get rid of some of these Bush guys, and he probably should. But the larger problem, obviously, is Congress. Congress said absolutely, we're not we're not ever going to close it, no matter what, no matter what it costs, we're not going to close it, you know. And then they go out up there and they start screaming about money. So the people that say, well, Obama promised to close Guantanamo, and this was a big sticky point with me when it didn't happen during his during his first term, was I was pissed it didn't get closed. But of course, learning that, that he's he's still to this day trying to close it, he's trying every effort possible to close it. Um, I said, okay, he he's trying, like he's trying to make good on a campaign promise. Um, and a big one to me, one of the really big ones to me, because Guantanamo is a stain on America that we're never going to wash off. Um, so, I mean, it's not his fault because he's still trying to close it. And Congress has said, and this is the conservatives. This, nope, we're not going to close it. And the House holds the purse strings and they go, we don't care what it costs. But don't you dare spend money on feeding poor kids. Don't you dare spend money on Head Start. We've got terrorists to keep alive. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, I mean, hey, we got their, their um, three more years uh, in this presidency. Yep. So uh, this is, uh, you know, I, I'm guessing that this has to be on his uh, top five things. It to is. get done. You know, health care is. is one of them. And, yep. You know, it sounds like that's in trouble, too. Yeah, it's just, it's well. just ridiculous. You know, it's ridiculous. How can you work? How can you work anything? With you know, uh, like you know, with the other side just not speaking out of uh, any kind of logic or common sense, they just they just don't like it because they don't like you. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, oh, Obama wants this, and that's what they do. They go and yeah. they sit in they go and they sit in meetings with him, and, and and Obama says, "What do you want?" And they go, "Well, we want this." And Obama says, "Okay, then you can have that." And they go, "Yeah, we don't want that anymore." You know, uh, there is a. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, you know, I still need to. I, need, I still need to just run run over um, and uh, uh, watch the movie uh, Forty Two. You know, the Forty Two. Jack- yeah, Jackie Robinson, the one about Jackie Robinson. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about that. And uh, I don't know. I mean, somebody. This is not an original thought, and this is not anything. It's not a brilliant thing, thought or anything. But um, there's a parallel here. You know, for you know, when Jackie Robinson uh, first came to the majors, you know, yes. there's like uh, uh, Branch Rickey, uh, you know, make him promise that for uh, I think three years that he can talk back to all the racists when people call him the N word, he can't talk back when people throw him, uh, throw things at him, he can't say anything back, and when you know, if the, the you know, oppose, opposing teams spike him. At the at the first base or whatever, he can't say anything for th- I think three years. Wow! And he can't say that. And after that, after that three years, she just you know, hey, listen, man, you know, I, I'm you know, I'm I'm out there. So you know, 
Yeah. Just, just, I, I there's a parallel here because I can feel that there's a lot of stuff that uh, the president is a very, it's. I think he's a very, he's a great man, because yeah. Not hey, listen, I, I, not that I'm anywhere close, but I don't think I can take that kind of abuse without saying anything. No, I couldn't. I, I, no, I you know, I, I, you know, I think there are a lot of stuff that you know. At night, he's probably you know talking to Michelle about. That is like, oh God, I can't, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I wish I can say something to, uh, you know, that that beep beep from Kentucky, but I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't say anything. I mean, imagine the, the conversations between the uh, between this uh, first couple, when yeah. when you know when hopefully hopefully nobody's listening, right. you know. Uh, imagine that. Imagine yeah. what he's going through. Imagine what Michelle's going through. Right, absolutely. You know? They're children. And I can't, children. I, can't, I, I, I cannot wait when, you know, he's finished his presidency and, you know, totally. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to be, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that he may be, uh, end up being a uh, professor somewhere. Right? He, he, right. Right. Um, uh, I think and, so. uh, and uh and uh I can I can't wait for the book. You know what I'm saying? I think about this from a from a father's point of view as I as I am a father, two daughters, much like uh President Obama is. And it, him and Michelle can take it. They're they're adults, it's ugly and they deserve none of it, but they can take it. I don't know how or if his children are are online or, com- or computer literate enough to where they go on right. the internet by themselves, because I would I would I would feel oh I already feel such shame just for, just for, the, for, just the, for, what, for the things that they must be seeing right. on the internet written about their dad right. that is not true the racist pictures and drawings right just the, the just racist the fact, cartoons just the fact that they're freaking in well. I don't know if NRA is actually selling that, but the NRA is somehow in their convention. Oh, 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 oh. They have people selling uh, silhouettes or it's, targets that is that, a bleeding Obama. That look like you yeah. Know? When you shoot it, it, it bleeds. It looks like Obama and it bleeds. That by, is a by company- the way, what what kind of sick? And I can say those. I cannot say those words. I know you can. It's called an opportunist. Those were made by a company called Zombie Industries, who, by the way, came under scrutiny again this week because they sell uh, they, they sell another thing like that called ex girlfriend. Right, it's called right. my, it's called my ex girlfriend, and the comment section on the 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 and, he, and it looks it's a girl, and you shoot it, and just like the Obama thing, it bleeds. And there are guys that are like, it really looks like my ex girlfriend, <laughs> and I'm gonna need one. And I can't wait to kill that bee, and it just goes on and on. Well, you, you know, know? I mean, the argument always is like, oh, you don't really, you see a president, you see the president there? I don't see, we don't say, you know what? Yeah! Shut, you know what? Shut up. You're we, we lying. Are not, okay. We are not stupid. You're lying if you say you don't see the president. Okay, fine. Let's say it's not the president. It's obviously a black man. Yeah. You know, so, so do you so, just like shooting black men? I mean, that's even worse. If I, yeah. if I may say. By the way, by the way, let me ask you this. This is I have nothing to do with anything that we just talked about. Oh, okay. I, I don't understand this whole zombie thing. I, I don't. Uh, you know, I mean, there's of course the, you know, I I'm, I'm a legend movie that I kind of like. Right. But, you know, have you noticed like, and there's like a, a newer new movie coming out about. Uh, Pacific Rim or something about no that's not that's not I, the one I, I, but I, haven't, like, I haven't heard about it yet but here I can I can speak to the zombie thing I, know, I don't want to say there's another movie out uh, soon that is about like zombie war like war battle zero or something I I don't know I'm like you know what I don't really watch I, I'm not that, those movies are not my I think I, I'm I, not think, I, I think I think I heard a little bit about about a little bit about it and I can speak to the zombie thing with some authority because. I I am into the zombie culture, and the way I got into it is I grew up. This is gonna sound so strange. I grew up <laughs> on a lot of heavy heavy metal music, yeah. and a lot of the artwork that accompanied the music was all this really really macabre stuff. And I became desensitized to violence when I was very very young because I grew up in an incredibly uh, vi- environment uh, uh, violent environments. 
And so by the time I saw a lot of macabre pictures on my heavy metal albums, it was kind of nothing. And then as I, as I got older, I gained an appreciation for, for, uh, being, being scared in it, but in a safe place, which is I can be at home and I can watch a zombie movie and get a little freaked out, but it's not real. And so I'm a little into it now, but I'm, I'm way surprised. And I thought I was kind of different, but I'm way surprised at how gigantic it is. And right. there's a series on AMC called The Walking Dead, and it is one of the biggest TV shows ever. Yes. And with with a lot of old zombie movies, and I, I I've pretty much seen them all. They've got such poor production. The fact that they're spending so much money on The Walking Dead, and they can do that because so many people are into it. I can't tell you why they're into it. I can tell you how I got into it and why I, I continue to be fascinated by it. But I don't really get how the whole world got into it. I thought I was kind of a special case. Yeah, it's a World War Z. That World War Z. I've heard about that. Uh, I. Don't understand this well. I don't understand the. I don't understand a lot of things. You know, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of that's stupid. Fine. It's like I don't understand anything. I don't understand. Well, I don't understand. Tw- I don't understand Twilight. Uh, oh, uh, I don't that, get that either. That's that's probably because I'm not uh, uh, a teenage girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I I'm not either. Though though I, my, my my buddy's thirty year old wife I, is doing it. Right, I don't understand this whole zombie thing. I, I, don't, right. I just don't get it, right? And I, and I don't understand, you know, violent video games, you know, right? And, and what uh, about all, what about all the rap music these kids are listening to? I I, <laughs> I, well, I understand your popular culture. I understand. Well, okay, well, well, okay, well, 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 what I'm, I guess I'm <laughs> understand. I'm understanding. I'm, I'm is, making fun of you. No, I know, but I understand. Uh, I understand picking it apart with uh, some sort of academic. Uh, you know, procedure. Yes. Like as in, you know, using, you know, sociology and all that. And for, for rap music, I, I, I love picking it apart with, you know, the musical logical uh, procedures that I know. Yes. But, uh, you know, there's like some of the pop culture stuff I don't, really get like um, the whole american idol thing i i don't get I the don't, american idol I thing i don't either. care for, i don't care for that at all right and you know what the other thing geez like we are like we are like totally tangent territory might as well hell that's fine might as well <laughs> i don't understand why whenever there's a ball game when they sing the ssb you know the star spangled banner yes uh it seems like nobody wants to just sing sing it you know like straight anymore like they have to add all these oh, like tricks and turns. They, they put their own signature uh, and, on. And it. a lot of times it's horrible. Right. You know, if you can pull it off, like you know Whitney Houston. Yeah. Go ahead. But go if, ahead. If, if you if you are kind of uh, if you can't you know have intonation problems, or you know, I don't don't take that chance. Yeah. For for God's sake, because it's the national anthem. Right. Nobody is going to say anything. If you sing it straight through, mostly as written. But give a good presentation. I Nobody is going. Nobody's going to say, "Man, that's like just so square." Nobody's going to freaking say that. So why don't you just do it? Right. You know, right. I'm, I'm hearing like you know a lot of times when they show Giants games or 49er games or, or you know, or, or you know these days Golden State Warrior games, and uh, you know they they show the national anthem too. I'm like, what the what the heck? I'm just like drive into a telephone pole. It's like right. no. Come on. Anyway, and right. uh, backslash rant. I, I'm done yeah. ranting on this. Hey, 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 hey. That's fine. I think there's there's quite a few uh, of the same things that you and I don't get, which I find uh, a very pleasing because I find myself. I think I'm very connected to the popular culture. But then when you when you say things like oh, God, this American Idol and the way they handled the SSB, I go, Yeah, you know what? You're right. What the hell's wrong with? I don't. Well, I, I don't, I don't get under, that. I don't understand reality. Well, that's another thing I don't understand. I don't understand the whole craze about reality reality shows. Neither do I. I don't care for reality uh, shows at you, all. Hey, I, listen, you, listen. If you like reality shows, you know what? Why don't you just do some good and become a you know go go get a degree and become a social worker? Yeah, and, and or, at least do some good. You know, or turn off the TV and look at the reality that's going on around your own house. Right. <laughs> if I <laughs> – rather than, you know, the, the, the kid television cameras that that's in, in the living room of some other stranger who you, your, your life is not going to be made any better by watching. Okay. Enough tensions, I guess. <laughs> All so right. Are you, are you ready to uh, kind of wrap the show up by uh, doing uh, uh, DMs? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'll tell you what. Um, Go ahead with your with your DM. I have... okay. Well, well, first of all, first of all, uh, doesn't look like we're gonna have a third person tonight. 
Right. Uh, no, we, wait, we waited and waited and waited. They yeah, know. that's fine. Um, I do 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 your DM. I I feel like uh, I'm gonna do this. Uh, my 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 DM is Miss McConnell. Okay, that's it. All right. I want to do a feel good moment that is very very important to me tonight. Wait, so your, go your ahead. DM okay. is who? Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. But I'm not gonna say anything about him. Like, oh, I'm just, is, that, I'm just... is that? Oh, Mitch McConnell is that <laughs> from Kentucky, right? Okay. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick anybody th- this week because okay. I, I, I wanted to end on this like incredibly positive note. Right. And I, I, I found, I found this great story, uh, this great marriage proposal story that I, I wanted to do a, a feel good moment on. Right. Okay. So, uh, so let me be quick. T- let me be quick. My, go ahead. My dishonorable pension, of course, of course, go to Texas Senator. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's hideous. It's, 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 this, this, this. I, I don't know if person, you know, personally, he's that hideous as a person. But you know, oh, some of some of some of some of his behavior within the Senate chambers, uh, hideous. hideous, hideous, right? Why would you even vote for somebody like that if if you if if you are capable of like just rational thinking? Anyway, so uh, so I think this, this only happened the past week. Uh, Ted Cruz. This is, I'm reading off the headline here and then some of the content in, in this page. Ted Cruz seeks to ban illegal immigrants in U.S. from citizenship. So he's just uh, proposed and uh, filed an amendment to uh, that would bar undocumented immigrants currently living in the U.S. forever earning a citizenship. He's so dramatic. Ever. Forever. Well, first of all, let me think. Just the political calculus. Of you are banished. Uh, this guy. Is from well, his last name is Cruz, right? So right. people, I guess, always thought of him as like a Hispanic, right? right. I'm not going to talk about that, right? Because that's going to get into all kinds of crazy territory. And I, I, I think I'm, I'm not totally qualified to talk about that because I'm not Hispanic. And you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I feel more comfortable talking about you know whether a person is Asian enough, you know. Oh, but, yeah. You know, but but, it's, uh, but anyway. But just the political, uh, just count the count numbers, you know. I mean, right. he's in Texas. Texas is getting more, uh, 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 you know, uh, Hispanic or Latino uh, every day. Yeah. Uh, who 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 is he? Who is he trying to uh, please over here? Unless you're telling me that uh, he's not aiming for a second term. He's aiming for something else. If he's aiming for second term. This doesn't make any sense, Mm-mm. right? Right. Because, well, you know, the people that you are trying to let me say screwed, are their number are, are getting bigger and bigger. He really in your is. State. Joe, he he really is Joe McCarthy. It, it's it's, it, like, it's it's amazing. He's aiming for something else. He's aiming for maybe you know when Demin is done. He's aiming for uh, is that Demin that went to become the president of. Uh, of a heritage foundation or something? Uh, yeah. He, he's aiming for something like that. He's aiming for a high-profile lobbying job or aiming for the chairmanship of the DN, uh, of the RNC or something. They they have an opening over at Heritage. They fired Rich Wine this week, the guy that was talking about eugenics. Well, it doesn't make sense, right? I, did we talk about this? It doesn't make sense, right? This dude is not going to be become president because he's born in Canada. Yeah, yeah. So, he, he was, he was born in Canada, but he can, he can still... He he can still. Be, uh, I'm I'm still doing a lot of research I don't on think this. So. No, no, it's no. Not. I no. I heard. I heard. I read somewhere that he can still become president because it's because there is something there's something that he can do because his parents are American born and no. I there, 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 there's 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 a there's a lot to it. I'm st- I'm still digging it up because no, he, no. He, he, he's he's going for an honest run for president. By the way, the fact he was born in Canada, well, we won't hear anything from the birthers about. Right. Right. True. True. They don't. They won't care. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's my dishonorable mentions. Uh, it's Ted Cruz, and I don't think that's going to be the last time. So. So congratulations uh, to Delaware and all the other states that are that are uh, uh, making a quality. Hold on, uh, hold on. Are you diving into your your the next thing? I am. Thing? Okay. Into my into my into my into my feel good. So um, here is Melvin's feel good moment.
Sarah Gilbert, as many of you may remember, played one of the daughters on the on the uh, uh, sitcom Roseanne back back during the nineties. And she recently became enga- engaged to her girlfriend Linda Perry, who is the lead singer for the group Four Non Blondes. And she told the story. And by the way, this raises the bar for marriage proposals. She told the story about how she was proposed to during a picnic in the park. She said, we went to the park to have food, and we were eating it. It was really sweet. And there's this guy sitting near us playing guitar. He was like a street musician or something. And he starts playing the song that we both love. And she says, well, that's so weird. That's just magical and amazing. Little did she know what was happening. So that ends. And the, and the girlfriend, Linda Perry, is like, well, I'm going to ask him to play this other song that's really obscure, and he probably won't know it. But then the guy knew the song. And suddenly the people around them all pulled out stringed instruments from underneath their blanket, started walking towards the two girls and playing Love Song by The Cure. By this point, Melissa Gilbert was absolutely shocked. Uh, Perry then displayed four T-shirts, one word each, Will You Marry Me, with the fifth shirt that, that had a question mark on it, and then she pulled out a ring. And then to further add to the romantic gesture... Perry told Gilbert to turn around, and there stood their mothers and a couple of friends. And then, just to put the icing on the whole thing, John Waite walked out of nowhere. John Waite, the guy who wrote the song Missing You, mm-hmm. popped out of nowhere and started playing the song Missing You. For, <laughs> for those of you that get on the Jumbotron and do your marriage proposal and drop to one knee, we have all been made absolutely obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most amazing proposal I've ever heard of in my entire life. And it was between two women of love. I want to wish them all the best in the future, Sarah Gilbert and hey, Linda Perry. You know what? Equality. Love is love. It's like two happy people. If you have a yes. problem with that, you are sad. Man. You are sad. sad. This, is, this is what love looks like. I don't care. Love is patient. Love is kind. I don't, I don't care what or whatever <laughs> book telling you that, you know, this is wrong. You're a sad human being for, you know, going against people being happy. And no, the only quibble I have with that story is, why is it always the guitar or the string instrument? Because <laughs> it's that's the most common one. That's Come those, on, are the, those, are, those are the ones that regular people who generally have no musical training just tend to gravitate towards. Tubas. <laughs> I know the tubas <laughs> are where it's at. Yeah. All well, right. Uh, okay. Let's, well, let's, you know what? This is yeah. This is uh yeah. This is uh we we had uh, seventy six minutes. So I think it's let, time to wrap this up. Yeah. Yeah. Let 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 let's wrap it up. I want to do a quick tease uh for for next week. There's a few things that I didn't get to that I want to. Of course, whatever comes up during the next week, we'll get into that. But I wanted to I want to get into Rush Limbaugh is about. Oh, what to he's drop getting he's, get, he's getting married again? <laughs> no, he. <laughs> you think? No, he is about to go off the air. Cumulus is thinking of dropping him. The Koch brothers are trying to buy the L.A. Times, and then of course. Of course, the 3D guns made oh, possible by God. the 3D printers. We'll get into that and whatever the hell pops up over the next couple of days on next week's show. Why, the why fire you can't gun, put out. The 3D gun, why would anybody unleash that kind of evil onto the world? Because we don't have enough guns. Oh, anyway, Said anyway. somebody with too many guns. All right. Hey, nice talking to you again, Melvin. Nice and, talking to you, Kevin, uh, as always. Let's, uh, let's, hope, let's hope we can pull uh, <laughs> this uh, you know, across the ocean thing off. I hope, I say, we can do it! Yes, yes we can. 